Today we're making Colin Skink, one of Scotland's most famous dishes and possibly the ancestor of North American chowder. So for Colin Skink, you're gonna need about a pound of smoked haddock, about a cup or a cup and a half of mashed potatoes, two cups of milk, I'm going to add a half cup of double cream as well, bay leaves, about one medium onion, finely diced. I had shallots, so I'm gonna go with those. About four tablespoons of butter, two tablespoons of fresh parsley, and you're gonna to wanna to keep the parsley stems. We're gonna end up making a, almost a tea out of the milk just to enhance the flavors of our soup base. Let's head over to the stove and get started. Given that Colin Skink and Chowder are remarkably similar in ingredients, it is likely that it made its way across the Atlantic from Scotland to Canada and gave us the delicious chowder that we so love today. Alright, so I'm going to add my one cup of milk, half a cup of double cream, medium low heat on the stove, and now it's time to add the fish. As I mentioned, we kept the parsley stems just to steep inside of the milk and cream. And then the bay leaves. And we're just gonna bring this to a very slow boil. When I say boil, I don't mean boil. You just wanna see bubbles coming to the surface, but in no way do we wanna scorch or burn the milk. It already smells delicious. Continue on at a low simmer for about three minutes and then you remove it from the heat and you let it sit for another five minutes just to make sure that you're getting all of the flavors out of the fish and the stems and the bay leaves. Okay, so bubbles are coming to the surface and there's extra steam coming off. So I'm going to take it down to a, a simmer level. I'm really afraid of burning the milk. <laughs> So the next step is to very carefully remove the fish and set it to the side. And you want to keep it as together so it doesn't break apart using a slotted spoon. Don't worry about the green bits, we're going to pick those out. <laughs> so strain the rest of the fishy milk into a pot. And this is just going to get thrown out. We're going to put our four tablespoons of butter into the pot just on a medium low heat. And you want to use unsalted butter for this recipe just because the haddock is pretty salty with the smoky flavor. And I'm just going to cook the butter until it's the, the foaming that it does simmers down and that's when you start to get the real flavor out of the butter. All right, cool. So as you can see, it's not uh, fizzing up as much now. So I'm gonna add in our shallots. Again, you can add onions. It's just that I had shallots in the house. So whether it's onions or shallots, this is just gonna be very quick because you wanna make sure that you do not burn the onions or the shallots in any way because they will just take the flavor away from what we're going for. The next step is to add the mashed potatoes. I just have it on a really low heat. Now we're gonna add the fishy brothy milk that we made earlier. Now you're gonna wanna give this a really good stir together so that the mashed potatoes break down and thicken up the broth of the soup. I can probably be using a better tool than this. <laughs> Can't go wrong with a classic wooden spoon. <laughs> you could also, if you like a chunkier soup, add just parboiled potato cubes alongside with mashed potatoes so that you get that little bit of creamy and chunky at the same time. So 
Moving over to our fish that we pulled out earlier. Make sure that it's flaked up, but not too small of pieces, otherwise they'll just disintegrate in the soup. So I'm just gonna go through and break it up just a tiny bit. And then I'm gonna add that into our mixture here. Now that we have everything back together in the pot, we're only going to make sure that the haddock is heated through. We're not cooking anything anymore, it's just getting it up to a great temperature. And then the very last, ooh, <laughs> the very last step is to add our fresh parsley. Oh, that looks beautiful. My mom was born and raised in Halifax, Nova Scotia, and she made sure that fish and seafood were a big part of our diets growing up. We would often find a piping hot bowl of clam chowder on the dinner table waiting for us. So when I discovered Colin Skink, I was obsessed. Okay, and just serve it with two pieces of crusty bread. And it's as easy as that. Delicious Colin Skink. A skinking attack. I'm sorry.